Mampela Rampele, academic turned political activist, then businesswoman and now politician again, has launched a new autobiography of her life, titled A Passion for Freedom. This title gives a different tone from her previous autobiography that was simply titled Mampela Rampele, A Life. In this new book, she covers her entire life so far, from childhood to recent events, including the launch of a new political party, Anang SA, which hopes to contest the 2014 national elections. Um, the autobiography runs uh, from birth right up to the present day. Um, I had not expected it to be quite as intimate as it is. Um, you talk about your puberty, for instance. Um, I think that's uh, it, it's very candid. It's wonderfully candid. Um, I also appreciated the fact that you you make no attempt to endear yourself to the reader. Um, and on the other side of that, um, there's also obviously a very healthy ego at work, but it never comes across as egotistical. It's really a very honest account, I felt. And uh, you mentioned Barack Obama, but I'm not quite sure that a politician on the eve of an election would write a biography like this in America. I think it's very South African, and it's a very different kind of tone and a different approach to life. The motivation for one versus the other. Very different uh, times, different periods in my life. The first one was a journey of healing. I wrote that first biography as a very, very deeply wounded woman. I cried every time I revised that manuscript. And it was when I did the first, uh, I mean the last revision, that I stopped crying. And I haven't cried since then. I can talk now about my pain and my loss and so on without the tears. But those tears had to flow. This version is about the maturing Mampela. The public role of the political widow derives from a relationship with her husband, and thus she is not there. She is there not as a woman, but as someone standing in for a fallen man. She becomes the ultimate honorary man. You then go on to the agency of the political widow and how it fits into into, into society. I think it's just very important that I'd like to deal with that aspect of the identification with Steve Beaker, the liability in some ways that that is, and uh, can we talk about that? The fundamental problem is a deeply, deeply structural psychosocial. And so the, the comments I make in the book around the political widow position stems from the reality. So I tell you, in reviewing this book, nothing. There was no story, no reference to who Mampila was, except a headline. I was madly in love with him. That's it. That's the sum total of the Sowetan's review of this book. Re read the book but didn't learn anything. Which tells you that we have a job to do. And part of the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing today uh, in the political arena is because I've tried every other avenue of addressing this very deep psychosocial problem of South Africa and realize that actually unless you change the power game at the top, if you have a president who admits to having sex with a woman, young enough to be his daughter, and you know what? It's no deal, no big deal. It just happens. She just happened to have worn a short skirt and blah, blah, blah. And we laugh about it. We, you know, we, we tolerate it. And we dignify him with the title of president. How do we expect that we will stop gender-based violence when that is the case? And so, I believe that my comments were very specifically directed at my sons and daughters. Because in a sense, my generation finds it harder to change those views of life, those rigid frames of what is and isn't appropriate for women and so on. 
We cannot successfully navigate uncharted waters without some script to guide us. This is particularly so for women, especially black women. Women have to find a script, a narrative to live by, because all other scripts are likely to depict them in roles that fit the conventional stereotypes. If you're a woman in a traditional environment, it helps that you look good, it helps that you've got something up here, because you need it. You need all of those strengths to fight the demons you're going to meet along the way. My mother knew this, and I learned from her. And she leveraged both those strengths to the maximum. She was also a very traditional woman in the sense that she was a great cook, great baker, great everything. And she loved the fact that she could outperform the traditional women who were kind of um, acquiescing and or submissive to their husbands. She said, you don't have to. You can cook him the best meal, bake him the best butts. Don't let him cross the line. <laughs> that you strengthen women by weakening men. I believe that we need to have a social relationship system that takes the best out of men. The strong, physical, masculine uh, traits that are protective, that bring a special flavor to relationships. But we also need the nurturing, cooperative, empathetic, and multitasking capabilities. <laughs> How did I write this book while I was doing what I was doing? <laughs>